Hello everyone. So today I wanted to share another interest of mine, another hobby. It is low key reenactment. So I want to make this video about riveted mail and how to make it. Because, well, uh, some YouTube videos are not up to standard on this subject, I believe. And it could be explained uh, a lot easier and uh, a lot more um, complicated. So today is the basic uh, of making riveted mail. So to start off, uh, I want to explain the difference between buttered and riveted mail. So, at first we have buttered mail. It's this little ring right here and it's nothing special, just a piece of wire and the ends are connected to each other. The butts are connected to each other, so buttered mail. So, if you want uh, to uh, make a big piece of buttered mail, you just grab the ring, put in another ring like so, grab a pair of pliers, this is the very very basic of making mail. You close the link and you put it down and that's uh, two links linked together. So as you can see it's very shiny, it is made from aluminum. It is not historically accurate at all, not in Europe, not in Asia. Button mail was used in Asia by the Mughals and the Japanese as well, but those were always uh, a tougher kind of uh, steel. This is aluminum, it's also very shiny, it's not period correct to anything. So don't use this for reenactment. You'll look very silly and people will try to cut your throat for it. So instead what you want, first let me show you something you can make with butter mail. It's a nice bracelet or something, like this. It will snag on your cloth, clothing. So I made this large piece because well I just felt like doing it a very long while ago. And it's also a great practicing effort to make properly, uh, proper mail. So yeah, that's not too difficult. What you want to do instead of button mail is riveted mail. Riveted mail is like this. It is a ring flat with a rivet in it. Riveted mail. So, how do you put this together? You get one of these links, get another link, put it in just like a button, like with the button mail, and then you close the link, followed by putting in a rivet. So I'll show you that in a minute. So at first, what you need is a good working station, a placemat like this one. Of course, the rings, they come with the rivets, put it in a con little container, because, well, they tend to escape a lot. You also need a little container for uh, broken links, etc, because these do not always come uh, perfectly um, solid perfectly drilled or perfectly uh, good together. So what you also need are a pair of pliers. You can also use gardening pliers, no problem at all. These are also from the medieval shop. These you can get at the medieval shop. This is a kilo for 40 euros. What you also need is these kind of pliers for when you make fuck ups. A pair of pliers for putting the rivets together. This one I do not prefer. I do however prefer this one. This one you just put it in a rivet, clamp it together and that's that. This one you somehow have to aim the rivet into this dent right here 
and then you clamp it together and it just doesn't work that well in my opinion. So that's the beginning of making riveted nail. When I, you are making riveted nail you can choose between the type I'm using, the round rivets, which are period, period correct to all of the middle ages, including uh, the era before, like the Celtic uh, tribes were using this kind of mail. You can also use it with the little triangles. And uh, those are called in Dutch Kelnieten, but yeah, I don't know the correct uh, English pronunciation. So yeah, making European foreman, you get an opened link, a pre-opened link, like this. Then, four links that are pre-riveted. You grab the opened one, you get four, like this, then you close this one. You can use it, both your fingers for it, and the pliers. Do use the pliers, please, because uh, you get calluses on your hands very quickly, even using pliers. So, uh, yeah. Unless you want to look very old and very tough, then don't use pliers. So yeah, like this. Then... Yeah, I haven't heard anything. Then you get a little rivet up here. You get this type of plier, put it in, and this is gonna take a while to get it perfectly right, because your first attempt will be rubbish. Unless you're a natural born riveter, but I wasn't, so even now I'm still struggling. This one also has these little dents in it, but I'm not using them, I'm just clamping it together. Hearing these little clicks. Do note this one, whenever you clamp something together and it just shoots like this, it feels like an electric current is running through your hand. Especially if you're holding the rivet like this, you will feel it in this hand too. It's just like you're being shocked uh, by lightning or something. So yeah, this is the beginning of your patch of mail. So as you can see, one link is facing that way and two links or four links are facing that way. So, if you want to put on the next batch, make sure that it isn't laying like this or uh, sideways or something, because it will, yeah, it will be a burden. If you start making uh, links for the first time, making mail, do please. Please just begin with open one and then four non riveted rings and just make a big section uh, just plainly using this as practice. You can rivet it again later, no problem. But you know. The first time it's not gonna go very good, so you're gonna make a lot of mistakes. Please just uh, practice it dry. So yeah, before you know it, you have something like this. A big patch of mail. 
this will take you a lot of time, uh, multiple hours uh, at, le at least. I believe a section like this is approximately two or three hours, if you are a bit experienced. So yeah, as you can see underneath, I have a lot of uh, links not riveted. That's because uh, if I want to make uh, uh, something else out of it, I can just open some of the links and just go on with my life. Instead of uh, busting all of the links uh, open by using this. It's ju that's just a waste of rivets and of uh, links. So, a useful way if you do make such a fuck up. Let's say uh, this one is not placed correctly. You have a pair of these. What you want to do, if you want to open this link again, is I hope you can see this correctly, is put one side of one blade at one side of the rivet and the other one underneath on the other side. So like this. I hope you can see this. Uh, no. Okay. So one underneath like this, one up top like this. This is the best chance of uh, letting the link survive and the rivet die. So yeah, put force on it. And it shoots off in the distance. And as you can see, the link survived and the rivet died. This is the best way. And now the link can be reused. Instead of what some people do is put on uh, the pliers like this onto the rivet and then just put a lot of force in. Uh, one thing is it won't break very quickly so you'll need a lot of force, a very lot of force. And um, you'll just break the link and it's just a waste. It's uh, as expensive enough as it is. So yeah, this one is saved, I can use it again. No problem. What I first tried is putting on uh, the pliers like this onto uh, one top, only the top of the rivet. But it do that doesn't work as much because you'll just squeeze the metal uh, one way which will make it stuck even more. So, one blade on top, one blade on the other side. Best way. So now, that was the basics of making riveted mail. I hope you have learned something today. And uh, I'll see you in the next video, because I'll be showing off my self-made coif. So, so long.